Hey guys, so we're just gonna give um, a few minutes for everyone to hop on uh, before we get into the little resin tutorial before we start painting today. Thanks, I wasn't sure, but I think I finally decided on this. So this just needs one more coat of resin on top just to, you know, really like seal in the vinyl. But. We made a Toby cat just in case it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. Hello, hello. Giving people a sec to hop on. So we'll finish this today, hopefully, after uh, we do this. Hi. So I did, uh, I got one done. I'm not sure if I like the, uh, the way that I have this like hung, but this is the only one that I actually have done so far. So yeah, so we're gonna resin the rest of them. Happy Friday. I did that um, the other day by myself. <laughs> Most of these, so I did the hummingbird and the giraffe last night on a surprise live and these two I did on my own. Didn't feel like painting anything like big on Wednesday night and like Thursday, so. All right, so we're still gonna give them another minute or so just because I said two o'clock. I'm just a little early, but um, for those of you guys who are just joining, we are doing a quick little resin tutorial. I know people have asked me, um, so we're gonna put some resin on top of these paintings and you know, I'll try and answer questions as we go. Um, yeah, so, but then we're, then we're gonna paint, so. I use resin rockers. Uh, that's my favorite resin to use, it's super clear. Uh, it's pretty thin, so like, it's kind of user-friendly in my opinion, uh, like beginner-friendly, I guess. Um, I've never had an issue with like a fast cure or, you know, like a flat, uh, sorry, a flash cure or anything like that. Um, it's very low bubble. So um, they have like a special air release formula. So you really don't have to do too much about getting the bubbles to release. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of show you guys what I do. And um, yeah. So first things first, gloves. Thanks. These are all going to be ornaments. So we'll see how they turn out. Gloves. Also important to note, um, you know, try and be somewhere with adequate ventilation. Um, you know, use a mask if you want to. You should. Do as I say, not as I do, because I don't wear a mask. But, um, yeah. So the reason that I have these in a little container is because I like to be able to close it off um, to air, <laughs> basically, um, and like make sure there's no like dust and cat hair as well. So resin cures, it doesn't dry. So putting it inside an airtight container is not going to do anything with how it will cure, if that makes sense. All right. I'm going to raise you guys up just a little bit. <clears throat> so I am adding equal parts. So I think this is a two ounce little portion cup um, of the A part and the uh, two ounces of the B part. So the resin that I'm using again is resin rockers. It is a one to one ratio epoxy resin. So that just means you use the same amount of each um, part. And it's labeled on the bottle A and B. So make sure that you don't you know, do the same, <laughs> the same part by accident. I've done that before because obviously it's not going to cure. Um, you want it to be equal. If you're not using equal measurements, then you risk having something go wrong within the curing process. You might get lucky and it might be fine, but it also might not be fine. Resin Rockers is the best. I actually have a link for them in my bio. Gets you like, I think five, 5% off or something. So, all right. So this is the next step that I do. Uh, this is just a cup of hot water. 
No question is a dumb question. Um, so this is just a cup of like hot slash warm water and kind of doing like a water bath sort of, uh, you know, like when you melt chocolate, <laughs> you put it in the, in the hot water. Uh, but with this, um, obviously I'm making sure not to let any water come over the sides and into my resin, but this will kind of help release bubbles as you're mixing. It kind of thins it out. So if you have like a thick epoxy, I know some of them are thicker than others. This will really kind of thin it out, make it easier to mix, things like that. So I don't know if you guys can see how like kind of cloudy this is, but you kind of see like little ribbons, I guess, uh, between the different parts. So one part is not as clear as the other. And so you kind of, I go by feel and also by sight on whether or not it's done mixing, but usually a few minutes of mixing is good. Probably, I would think that um, it like soaks up. Cause if I like spill this on cardboard or something, you obviously can see like that soaking spot where, you know, the cardboard kind of starts to soak it up. So I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe if you did like a, I don't know, a special type of quilling that had like not absorbent kind of like paper like paper. But I've never done paper quilling, so like I wouldn't know for sure, but I would assume probably not. So I'm just sitting here mixing it up. You can see it's getting a little bit more clear. Yes, yes you do. Some people say don't use um, a popsicle stick because the wood kind of introduces air bubbles, but honestly, I really don't ever have an issue with it, especially since I kind of mix it while it's sitting in some hot water. And just this resin itself is just really awesome at like air release. So I never have an issue. Hopefully I mixed enough. Like you can see there are some bubbles, but let's just let it sit for a little bit and maybe you'll see that it starts to kind of release its bubbles. Ooh. Well, you don't have to resin over your dots. You can always use like a glossy spray, you know, and that'll seal in your dots. I don't like this song weird oh shit I'll have to look so I don't know to me it looks like I can see a bunch of bubbles like if I went in with my lighter you can see a lot of them go away but anyways so let me move this cup out of the way. I should probably just dump it out so that I don't spill it. Okay, so this is nice and clear. And now for the kind of fun part. Sometimes I find it's a little bit easier uh, to control if I have it like poured into like smaller amounts. So I'm just gonna take a little like medicine cup and I'm gonna pour some of that in there. So let's start with the dog. So I start with a small amount and I just kind of push it to the edge. I try to avoid any spillover, but like sometimes it happens. Uh, but the back is protected. I'll have to show you guys what the backs look like before I do one of the other ones. Whoops.
I was a little poor happy so I can see that it's starting to drip behind the ear but I'm not worried about it because the back is protected hmm <laughs> I uh, was influenced by Mandala Love Affair. She does paw prints on things and I kind of used her explanation because she was kind of showing us how to do paw prints one day and I took notes so that I could do it. But I thought it was like a perfect little, little addition to this because I didn't want to do a face like the cat because I wanted to see something different you know like if i didn't like the face on the cat i didn't want to have to do it on the dog too okay so i'm using a torch lighter um it's a little bit like better it's not quite a blow torch but it's not like just like a regular lighter it has like some force behind the flame but anyways so on the back of these pieces i put resin tape um this is, it's less sticky than like a packing tape, you know, like it doesn't leave behind a residue, but it's sticky enough to stay on the back of surfaces. So that's what I use on the back. You can use liquid latex. As long as you know that, you know, someone isn't allergic to latex, you can use hot glue, depending on if you have like a, a lining behind your piece. So like all of these wood pieces come with a masking tape barrier on the back and that's to protect them from burn marks from the glow forge um so i don't take that off until like everything's completely done so that's just an extra barrier so um you can use hot glue and just kind of glue around the edges if you don't want to use resin tape or um liquid latex or you could use resin tape or you could use liquid latex it just kind of depends But yeah, I um the last time I did this little resin tutorial, like I totally forgot about um resin tape. I forgot that I had it. I was using resin tape for a while. Um but I primarily used it for pieces that had kind of like the cutouts and I would do a resin fill, so I would kind of use it to make like a fake back that would hold my resin as it cured without it like leaking. And I totally forgot that I had it and that you could use it you know, on plain wooden pieces. So I'll just tape a bunch on there, um, not a bunch, but like enough to cover the back. And then I'll go in with my X-Acto knife and I'll just cut um, around the edges so that it's like perfect, like outlined or whatever, it's a perfect shape, so. But yeah, I kind of just like take my time with it but I'm not like taking too much time because the longer that this is exposed to the air, the more likely I am to have a stray little piece of dust or cat hair, cat glitter, Toby glitter, whatever you want to call it. So I try and do this like quick enough, but not like too quick that I'm like spilling stuff everywhere. I use resin rockers. Um, their resin is, uh, low or no VOC. I'll have to double check, but it's one of the better ones. I know that like, you know, that doesn't ne necessarily mean much. Um, but I don't wear a respirator, but you should do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so this one's just getting a second coat. So this one might drip a little bit more because I'm not quite like doming it as much because it already has the first layer of epoxy on it, but that's okay. This one's kind of an experiment one. So like if I don't like the way it turns out, I can always keep it because it reminds me of my cat. None of this is UV resin. I do use UV resin, but not for this. This is like your regular cure over 24 to whatever amount of hours, depending on your resin. Thanks. 
Yeah, I kind of modeled this off. At, um, uh, I kind of modeled this after my my cat Toby. He is a a gray tabby. I like these designs because it kind of looks like it reminds me of like tabby cats. But like that obviously like wasn't always the plan, but it just so happens that it reminds me of tabby cats. Okay. So it looks like all of these have, nope. The pink mat that I'm using, it's called a doming mat. And it just kind of holds my pieces up a little bit higher so that when, if resin were to drip off, it doesn't settle like directly underneath my piece. It drips off and it catches in these grooves. I got it from Etsy. Um, I think the seller is like Charms by Emmy Chan or something. Um, but she has these. They're they're nice. Um, and they're like big too. I think they're like 11 by like 15 in size or something. So. But yeah, I think it was only like 8 bucks or something for this mat. I have two of them. I love them. So I'm just going in with my torch lighter and I'm not like, you know, holding it directly onto the resin. I'm just moving it very quickly over it um, and it's gonna pop any little air bubbles, so. Do, 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 what am I doing? All right, and that's that. So then I close it off. So that there's, you know, I can limit how much dust, hopefully none, but so that I can limit how much like dust or cat hair goes on it. Um, I did, but I took a picture, you guys, because does anybody have a Sam's Club membership? Anyone? Because I, I found them at Sam's Club the other day in a four pack for like 20 some bucks, I think, which is a really good deal i took a picture so i could show you guys but i forgot to show you guys hold on it's here somewhere there are five of them which i think is pretty nice um i kind of make sure that you guys can see it for 25 bucks which is really really good because i think these are about like eight to ten dollars at walmart or something like that so five of them I, I use two, but I don't do that much resin. But if you're doing a bunch of pieces all at once, getting five of them might not be so bad. Sometimes I make a mess, but the doming mats really help. All right, so I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm gonna, you know, kind of confess something to you guys. I resined the turtle yesterday thinking it, you know, it'll be fine. It needs, you know, two coats. Well, you know, go figure. It only needed one coat. So we're not resining the turtle. Sorry. It's already done. <laughs> Um, they're probably going to be about the same size as my large ornaments, so like 30, 32 tacos. <laughs> tacos, cookies, dots, whatever. I know we're not allowed to talk about prices. So I'm gonna resin some bezels. Um, I'm just doing a black background so that I can paint them. Um, I ran out of like dye, so I'm just using black glitter. Um, so whenever I do these bezels, if you were to just stick them straight on top, they're gonna slant because of like this part. So I just take like a little mini like doming mat and I hang them off the edge so that the necklace like chain part thing hangs off so that this part uh, is completely flat. And I just add a little bit at a time because it does spread out and I do want to leave room so that I can paint them and then still add like a dome coat layer.
Another thing I like about Resin Rockers uh, resin is that it has a relatively longer work time to it. So, you know, if you're kind of still new to resin or you're... Toby. My cat almost killed himself. <laughs> um, if you're new to resin or you're like doing a bunch of things and you, you know, don't want to have a bunch of work. Hold on. <laughs> Toby, stop! You're gonna hurt yourself, dude. Ugh. Cats, crazy cats. Um, I don't know what I was saying. He distracted me. I have a rug kind of rolled up because you know now that it's springtime and he's starting to lose his like winter coat, he just he's licking constantly. And, you know, he'll just get a hairball and throw up. And he loves to throw up on my rugs. And I really like that rug. <laughs> so I don't want him to ruin it. And so I roll it up every night or, like, when I leave my apartment. And I forgot to, like, unroll it. And he just, like, he just, like, stuck his head. He, like, dove into, like, the rolled up carpet that was standing up straight. And he was, like, stuck. His feet were out. And he was, like, struggling. <laughs> Oh, yes. Thank you. Resin workers, uh, resin rockers work time is pretty long. Um, some stuff like starts to cure really, really, really fast. But I think that this gives you about a half hour of work time, which is really nice. Now, because I use hot water when I'm mixing my resin, that will speed up the process just a little bit. So the chemical reaction is going to start. So I might not quite have you know, 30 minutes of work time, probably have about, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. Um, I can already feel that this is getting thicker, but like I, it's not thick enough where like I can't, I can't use it if that makes sense. No, I'm just using like a, a regular like black glitter. This isn't like a holographic glitter. This is just like kind of like a metallic-y glitter. So like there's a tiny bit of sparkle to it, but for the most part, it just looks black. I ran out slash lost my tint, my black like resin stuff. So I'm just using glitter instead. And I just realized I've been off camera this whole time. So sorry. My bad. Oh no. Cats are so naughty. They really are. Oh, thanks. Got lots of random stuff on there. It's because I can't make up my mind and I love doing a bunch of different things. As long as I can dot it, I try and do it for the most part. There are a couple things I don't like doing, like mugs, rocks, <laughs> you know, but. Well, you know, I probably would like doing rocks. I just don't like making the rocks. <laughs> yeah, we have door stops. Um, we have like a couple like kind of closet kind of like accordion doors, you know. Um, we have to get those those door stoppers to kind of hold the door shut because he tries to like open the door. And I mean, he still gets in sometimes like he'll he'll use his paw and he'll take the door stop out from underneath and go in. But it stops him more than, you know, it used to. So. Let's take a toothpick and just push the resin into these corners. It's mostly going in there by itself, but 
this one to make sure. Me too. Me too, Emmy. All right. So these are good. I have a little bit of resin left, so now I'm like, what should I do? Yeah, that'll work. So I just sprayed some rubbing alcohol on the on this mold. Um, that's just to help the resin lay so that I can avoid air bubbles. Uh, I can't listen to it anymore because I've been uploading my lives to YouTube. And because it's like not royalty free music, um, it flags my videos and either gets them taken down or like I, they can't be watched in certain countries. So like I can get like a copyright strike. So because I want to start uploading things to YouTube, I just have to unfortunately not listen to my regular music. I will if I know I'm not uploading it to YouTube, but most of these uh, recently, I've kind of been like, yeah, I'm probably going to upload it to YouTube. I just like, <laughs> I've been slacking the last couple weeks. It's fine. Or maybe not a couple weeks. I feel like I just did it. We might be like a few, a few episodes behind or something, but. Quick little spritz of rubbing alcohol to pop any of the remaining bubbles. And we close it off. Yes, the turtle is dry. I can show it to you. I, I thought it was going to need two coats because they pretty much always do, but go figure, it only needed one. Yep, yep. I usually UV resin after I paint um, just because it's a little, like, full. Um, and so, like, it tip the resin typically likes to run over, but with UV resin, you can stop it from dripping over if you do it fast enough. So, here is the turtle. I was actually pretty shocked it only needed one layer, so, you know, but here it is, nice and shiny. You can see those color shifters. So, um, on my larger pieces, I will see, like, my dots start to poke through. I don't know if I have any because I pretty much everything's either done or under a second coat of resin. Um, but like the dots will start to poke. So you'll see it all be completely flat and then you'll see little just like parts where you can still see the paint poking through. Um, and the resin like isn't tall enough. The coat wasn't thick enough or it just settled too much and spread out. So, all right. So that's that. And that's the resin tutorial, nice and